TRP, Targeted Retinal Photocoagulation, by Igor Kozak, Vitura Retinal Division of the King Khaled Eye Specialist Hospital, TRP, Pan-Retinal Photocoagulation Strategies, require physicians to use a previously acquired fluorescein angiogram offline for treatment planning and guidance as well as intraoperative manual laser spot positioning on a slit lamp with an inverted fundus image or indirect ophthalmoscope. All this in an attempt to target areas of non-perfusion for photocoagulation. A new and novel approach to targeted PRP are made possible by Navalas, a computer-guided laser photocoagulator and fundus imaging device manufactured by ODOS of Germany. Navalas eliminates many of the difficult obstacles encountered in standard PRP. It uses a unique camera-based delivery system. In this approach, multiple retinal imaging modalities may be used as a template for creating integrated treatment plans which may then subsequently be executed in concert by the surgeon using the built-in laser photocoagulator. A registered overlay of retinal images with marked areas to be treated on the living fundus guide the physician efficiently and precisely during the act of treatment. Principles and rationale of TRP include the treatment is performed using wide-angle retinal imaging. Direct laser photocoagulation is then applied to areas such as NVE and non-perfusion only rather than performing massive pan-retinal photocoagulation to the entire periphery. This avoids undue visual field loss and potential post-operative macular edema. Furthermore, as with focal treatments, the treatment aiming beam is positioned onto the planned locations. The surgeon needs to confirm correct positioning for treatment prior to the application of laser. For our study, we followed this same protocol. We imported from a third-party imaging device suitable wide-angle ang angiographic images. These images were then registered to images acquired by the Navalas, and targeted areas for treatment were marked up the areas to be treated and could use this plan for semi-automatic treatment processing. Our patients, eight eyes, of six consecutive patients, six eyes with prior PRP showing residual leakage on fluorescein angiography, one eye with PDR, one eye with severe non-proliferative retinopathy, the mean age 43 plus or minus six years, laser parameters between 80 microns and 120 microns spot size, 100 milliseconds pulse duration was used and between 80 to 140 milliwatts of power was applied. The treatment strategy wide field angiography is taken to allow identification of areas to be treated. Treatment plan is based on areas of capillary non-perfusion, arteriovenous shunting, neovascularization, and adjacent ischemic zones. Case 1. Proliferative diabetic retinopathy with prior PRP. Here a 50-year-old male patient with hypertension, type 2 diabetes, and a history of extensive PRP for PDR in both eyes was seen in our retina clinic. Visual acuity was 2080 in both eyes. His recent fluorescein angiogram examination revealed dye leakage supertemporal to the macula, along with extensive area of capillary non-perfusion in the left eye. 
The patient was informed about the need to perform additional laser photocoagulation, to which he agreed. Due to already extensive PRP, we chose to use TRP as the best photocoagulation option. The angiogram was then imported into Navalas and superimposed on the retinal image of the left eye and the treatment plan was created. The plan targeted both the neovascularization and the adjacent area of non-perfusion, avoiding the foveal avascular zone. Post-treatment documentation shows photocoagulation burns accurately corresponding to the pathologic areas. This patient remains stable at month four. Case two treatment naive proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Here a 41 year old female patient with uncontrolled type 2 diabetes was found to have proliferative diabetic eye disease in her left eye. Visual acuity of 2050. Pre-treatment fundus images showed retinal hemorrhages and hard exudates. Wide field fluorescein angiogram showed areas of capillary non-perfusion and active neovascularization outside of the arcades. The patient agreed to TRP approach to treat her left eye. Fundus fluorescein angiograms from Navala system was used for creating treatment plan in which neovascularization and all areas of retinal ischemia were targeted. These retinal images were taken immediately after completion of the treatment and, as in all other patients, this patient remains stable at four months. Case 3. Treatment Naive Severe Non-Proliferative Diabetic Retinopathy This 36-year-old male patient with poorly controlled diabetes and hypertension presented to the retina clinic for eye examination with a visual acuity of 2040 in both eyes. Retinal examination showed tortuous blood vessels, numerous hemorrhages, and hard exudates outside the macula in both eyes. Fluorescein angiogram performed both with regular and wide field camera showed large area of non-perfusion in the posterior pole, but no active neovascularization. Due to inability to come for close follow-ups, he chose laser TRP as the treatment of choice. After careful planning and integrating treatment plan into the photocoagulator, the procedure was performed uneventfully. As with other patients, this patient remained stable at month four. Results. Visual acuity in all eyes remained after the treatment the same as at the baseline. Immediately after treatment, the laser applications were visible in the areas targeted for treatment. At month four follow-up, none of the eyes developed vitreous hemorrhage. One eye had persistent neovascularization for which additional laser photocoagulation was applied. Summary and conclusion, TRP is an accurate approach to treat ischemic retinal conditions with fewer complications as seen with conventional PRP. Navigated TRP is a new way to perform TRP and offers several advantages to conventional TRP, which uses slit lamp or indirect ophthalmoscope laser delivery. This pilot study demonstrates that it is a safe and feasible technique, clinical efficacy of which needs to be tested. CME question, which of the following is true regarding targeted panretinal photocoagulation? TRP. A. It has been extensively studied in clinical trials. B. It can be safely and precisely performed using retinal navigation technology with pre-planned retinal images. C. Slit lamp and indirect laser delivery are the only ways to perform TRP. D. TRP is limited to sectorial laser treatments of branch retinal vein occlusions.